particular performance that you've seen so far that uh, I think has stood seconds. out? Well, from anybody. From anybody on Complexity. Oh, well, yeah. I, I mean, as I said, I've been harping on about it, but Miracle. The, the, Miracle those teams. last two games Miracle where, teams. you know, that was, that was sort of carry performance on level with Miracle all the best carries in the world. You know, that was top tier, number one carry. Uh, Miracle, they're turning up. And we, we've seen it in the past. This is a great sort of backstory from Miracle. He used to be this legend. And back in the, I don't know how long ago, probably 20 years ago, Radiant back in the early days, Dota, and he was he was crushing it. Mm -hmm. He was coming out with his, of course, the iconic, the Naga Siren, which I, I kind of hope that, that we see being brought back. Other teams are playing it. I don't think Cole really play it that much, or if, if at all, but you have Miracle on, on your team. Back in the day, he w he, w he showed everyone how to do it. He was the micro god, the guy that, that proved that Naga Siren was busted as... Uh, as heck, if you knew what you were doing, yeah, and he did. Octarine Radiance build. So I, I want to see it come back. And huh? Maybe against OG, maybe this will be the game that they do so. It does get banned against me. OG, no. We have seen it being banned oh. out a lot. They know. Miracle Naga Siren, <laughs> it's still... It, it, he did it back in the day. He'll do it now. You can't let him have it. Nice snipe there, Owen. And I gotta say, I actually learned how to say his name correctly from you. You say it so naturally. It's, it's literally spelt Miracle. Well, I mean, it's, I actually have to teach myself. It's like saying Merica. But Merrick is miracle. I mean, he is playing North NXT. America. Yeah, yep. it's a miracle. Miracle. The most miracle. American player. Heck. Miracle. So, okay, let's get in the draft, boys. Like as that French guy on the camera. Oh yes, is it Frank? Is that Frank? Uh, as we talked about with Owen, great snipe on that Naga Siren, and we're gonna see no Dark Seer, no Doom, no big surprises from the rest of the bands with Draw Ranger and Nature's Prophet and Oracle, but. Securing Pangolier first by yeah. OG. That opens you up to some major counters. Grimstroke has been seen many times in this tournament as a quick counter. And you're going to pick Radiant that Pango first. Oh, it's an interesting one. I mean, what we saw the the, uh, the, the Pango yeah, yesterday in that EG series, and it didn't look too great. He struggled in the lane, and then he sort of proceeded to hop on the feed tray. Many a time getting caught out alone after he went for sort of a he, team utility build. He ended up buying Ana a ticket on that trade it's also. True. <laughs> It was it was a little rocky, but they they obviously feel confident going with it with it again. They're gonna back it up with an Abaddon. Oh wow! Well. I did want to talk a little bit about this this Abaddon. No one has really been running this since Team Secret premiered it at the last major, except for OG. They still believe in support Abaddon. I mean, it's it's definitely still very good. It is I'm very a little good. surprised that we haven't seen already more. I feel that this is a hero that if we see it do good in a couple of games, by the time we hit the main event, everyone's gonna be trying to fit it into their draft. This hero fundamentally. With the, the the way that he can offer just so much, which, uh, not, not just in the lane, but at all points, the the early harassment with the miss coils, and then the fact that remaining. it's this hero that could just be such a nuisance in in the team fights, and it, and it's a support that you do have to draft around. You have to make sure that you've got some way to to keep him out, make sure that he can't just just throw out these shields after shields after shields, making this extra effective HP that you have to work for on the enemy cores. Right, but there's got to be a weakness, right, Tsunami? I mean, Owen <laughs> beefed it up, sounded pretty it's good. good. But how come not everyone's picking Abaddon right now? What's the big stopper there, Tsunami? Any ideas? Where is Nyx Assassin? Oh my goodness. Why is he not picked or banned? Oh my goodness. Maybe they just forgot. Every He's been first picked banned almost every series. Yeah, Nyx, one Nyx, one of the advantages of Nyx Assassin against the Abaddon matchup specifically yeah. is if you break him, then he won't be able to get off that Radiant's passive borrowed time. You can activate it manually, but you kind of have to be paying attention a lot. I mean, time. if you throw a silence in, yeah, he's, yeah, exactly. he's a lot of trouble. And, and Nyx Assassin can also be very nice against the Pangolier. You know, one sort of swashbuckle out of position and a quick spike carapace and yeah. bam. Or just carapace. Goes up. The aphotic shield just goes straight into an aphotic shield, pop it, carapace it, stun off the Abaddon. Oh, yeah. It would mean that Cole would have to then move one of these two heroes probably into. Right. Into I mean, four it, it, they have done a they they limp sand They gang. did do a limp sanking earlier, it didn't work <laughs> out. Um, and oh, well, with the Lesh picked up, this is. I don't understand I mean, why yeah, Nick Sasson isn't picked. There's something weird right, going on they, here. They, yeah, they're leaving. Oh, no, it's banned out. Finally yeah, banned. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just okay. happened. So, uh, Nick's Assassin is a very late ban. I thought we got to see that hero for the first time in a in long time. Yeah. They're going to be going with the Lashrak. It makes some sense here. Yeah. Right? Three, yeah. Three, three ran it. They ran it with Sand King as well. Wyvern's the really only remaining. new thing that Complexity haven't shown yet, at least in today's series. I don't know if they picked it in Five yesterday's series. Remaining. But OG are sticking with their mainstays. It's just that I think part of the reason that Topson's Pango didn't do so well, you and uh, Owen and I, we were saying that the itemization to go for a utility build as opposed to like a javelin 
damage oriented build was really hampering his especially when it's in that mid bro exactly like you're, you're getting that level benefit like sure it's it's nice as the mid to, to build these auras and we do see a lot of mids do that for instance like the co-ops the vipers of today they will go down that sort of utility to utility rope with the greaves and stuff uh, but Cole, moving on they're getting that omni knight we oh, saw yeah. it from them earlier today on monkeys forever did win that game too look pretty hot it's gonna get through here og anti-mage into the game Anti-mage. I've seen uh, this hero come and go. EG ran a great anti-mage, I believe, earlier. Was uh, RTZ not dying once on it, if I'm correct? But this hero seen a little bit more picks here. Uh, where'd that come from? I thought that hero was pretty much dead last minor. It's, I mean, I, I, it, the, the, well, sort of going back a few Ten patches, seconds. the whole change to the spell shield, uh, yeah. the, the ability to have that active, it... Like, that spell in itself. I mean, anti-mage was being picked sometimes, and then it felt a little weird that they were like, hey, let's just make this spell incredibly good yeah uh, the, the, the hero is brilliant the the fact that you can have that sort of ability to just turn around any sort of counterplay that originally in the past was very strong against anti-mages is absolutely massive and of course you got it in a game now where there's that big juicy mana void target there's a less rack on the opponent's side so if that less rack gets a little low on the mana kaboom everybody's gonna blow up indeed let's not forget who's playing this the classic anti-mage this yeah. is a terrifying hero on that particular player and I think part of the reason why Am maybe isn't so popular is a lot of the popular carries that you see these days are very willing to participate in mid-game fights. So like mm. your life stealers, your phantom assassins, even the hard carries like Medusa and Spectre with like once Medusa gets to that mystic snake talent, she's more than willing to participate in fights. Whereas anti-mage, you never really have a good opportunity unless like Owen was saying, you have a good mana void target. Only issue is that this is more than likely going to be a support-oriented sure. Leshrac. Yes, yeah, you would imagine. Which we don't know for sure, because, you know, Wyvern, Sand King, Leshrac, they can bounce these around. But picking an anti-mage without really seeing that easy mana void target leads me to believe that they're just confident in his hard carry abilities. It's, yeah, especially now with that Pugna picked up. I feel like if you're complexity, yeah. you run that Lesh as a core Pugna against, uh, sorry, as, as, as a core against Pugna and anti-mage, you're going to have a hard time. Absolutely. So now I feel that they are forced, that the and Limp probably team. has to play the Sand King again. And that game earlier, it didn't go too good because Five you're looking, it's got to be monkeys, right, on the on the Omni Knight. Yeah. Yeah. Your Lesh and your Wyvern, as I say, you do not want to have that Lesh as a core against Pugna mm -hmm. and anti-mage. And then you, you are forced to this SK onto either your one or your two. You, you don't want to. You don't want to play a carry Sand King unless you're at some, you know, two K MMR pub. <laughs> it's it's got to be limp, and it didn't work out earlier today. Yeah. Wow. Hey, if you're a spellcaster in complexity's lineup, you are in for a bad time already with OG. It's a tough last pick here, Tsunami. Any guesses? If having to pick a one position Sand King makes everything so weird. <laughs> I don't like, but there's no real way that they can turn it around. I guess they could. I don't know. I, for what it's worth, Anti-Mage does have a lot of Disable to be concerned about, so you can just straight up Winter's Curse him. If you're really good as Anti-Mage with Ana is, then maybe you can get the counter spell off in time, but you are able to get a long-range Disable like that, and then you can follow it up into a Yule Scepter from Leshrac, or a Rod, I think, 34314 last time. I mean, maybe you could sort of speed things up. I don't know if they want to run something like for Miracle, like, like a Lycan, something that can sort of speed up the pressure of this game, because there's not mm. too much catch. It was well, the lasso... And the Rolling Thunder if he gets right. on top of you. But if you pick some sort of elusive core that can play fast, it could work out quite nicely against OG and sort of play at a pace that the anti-mage isn't going to be able to respond to. You know, this AM does need time. That's true. Maybe Cole can abuse that here with a big pick for Miracle. Like you said, uh, well, Lycan's good. Anything they can push because you can't end the game fast just with kills. You need to end the game fast by taking structures. Mm -hmm. And like normally I would say this is a great position for a DK that yeah. Complexity likes quite a bit. But that is Limp's hero more often than not, and he'll go like Radiance and stuff like that. I, I just, the Sand King <laughs> he puts them in such a it's weird a, position. If they do pick something that allows them to play fast, then they maybe oh. get away with it. But they're going to try and you know, go for the carry matchup, the Terra Blade. Yeah, this is popular against anti -Mage. It is it's one of the big reflection. ones as well from Miracle. Yeah, and that, that as well. But we have a Pugna, don't we? That's pretty big, massive damage on that Terra Blade. Yeah, it's a lot of blast. Apart. I mean, that's, they've got burst up the Wazoo over there on OG. You guys think it'll be work out? OG gonna take this one easy? I, I don't think easy. I... Mm -hmm. I do... The Terra Blade against... I don't, Miracle was playing so damn good earlier in that yep. set, game 2 and game 3. On a Terra Blade, this is a hero that he can perform on. The, the Pugner and the AM, you know, you can sort of consider the other four heroes in Carl. It definitely sort of makes you want to say, oh, it's, it's gonna be a good game for OG, but... I find it hard to ride off the Miracle Terra Blade. Yes. 
And it's true. Tsunami, any thoughts? Ten seconds I think remaining. this will maybe prove how good this five possession Abaddon still is, because mm. not very many people are picking remaining. it, but I think Abaddon could be very, very significant in making sure this anti-mage can go late, and being able to save him with this hard dispel from this chain disable that can come out, and <sighs> being able to dispel off like the reflection and stuff like that. Yeah, no two houses work cut out for him. I, yeah, if this mm -hmm. Terra Blade gets a good timing on his mantra and such, a miracle's able to hit to the jungle, I... I, re I do think this Terra Blade can carry this game. It's going to be hard. It's not going to be easy, but they, they can carry it. There's not a crazy amount of disable. He could have a good game on the TB. All right. Well, our analysts think that it's anyone's game. We are going to have one loser in this. Well, actually, two. The guy spamming uh, Fluke, OG, and NA Law. What are you? Don't put Pumba in front of me during my exit. Thank you, Pumba. Keep it down. Anyway, somebody's going to be wrong. Some of the haters are going to be wrong, but we have got it right with two of our wonderful casters. Kyle and Gods will be bringing you this game very shortly. Bye! To a future no. of grief. We are in game and live with our first game of the best of three to determine who will start in the winner bracket and who will start in the lower bracket. Winner bracket, lower bracket, God, I'm following my words already. Uh, is Complexity versus OG and a best of three series to decide Group D. Nailed it. Bring me as Kyle. Hi. 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 Kyle. Okay. Yeah, so we were just talking about it, but I loved the third pick Bat from OG. They picked a bat in their opener to kind of cover it. You know, you're not ever going to pick Bat Rider into that hero. Then they take it third, and it's this cool concept where, like, okay, you got Wyvern Lesh Sand King. Oh, shit, they picked Bat. We got to get Omni to sort of address it. Oh, no, now there's an Animage, and the last pick, Pugna. So this hero that Cole takes with their 20-second selection is, like, it's... It, it, it has to deal with, like, everything, right? It's terrible, actually, against Bat Rider. And the cool thing that OG does with the Bat Pango is that they can play it on the three, their four, their five. So now all of a sudden the Bat is the core, Pango is the four, and you've got this excellent scenario where Bat can just run over this Terror Blade thing. They are going to be running a core less track. This was something that the panel thought, you know, maybe a little bit unlikely because of the Pugna being in the game, but I, I think they just have damage issues if they yeah. ran. Um, a core sand king with a core omni. Like, yeah. I think the lesh at least gives them damage, and at some point yeah. you can get a BKB if you need. And it's, I, I think you're actually better off playing core lesh at times against the AM Pugna, simply because you don't really use too much mana early on. It's mostly stun edict. You also have a stun that will land through AM spell shield. And in addition, at some point, as you said, you can get BKB, you can get hex. Atos is quite nice. You can just play a different sort of style and. Yeah, I like it here. And you needed damage, to your point. And the TB Lesh combination is one of my favorites. You take these, like, Lycan, Terror Blade type heroes, tons of building pressure, combo with Lesh, and you could theoretically have six towers dead in five minutes if you're not careful. The, if Complexity can kind of get that snowball going, they are going to be running Miracle's TP down, TB down in the bottom lane. Jerex, the four, kind of laning here as he waits for Seb to arrive. Seb making the long walk from top lane as OG look to make sure they get the lane matchups they mm. want. And this is key. And it's nice that they leave Jarex here, so it's not as if they're going to lose one wave hard. But Bat must play against Terrorblade. That is the whole point of this pick here, and why they made it a core. Abaddon is low on health and mana. We'll be looking for that miscoil deny. Probably a clarity for now. We'll see him probably try and get that deny off either on a creep or something. Z-Freak knows this, and that's one of the things. Playing against stunners is Abaddon. You have to be a little bit careful to make sure you actually deny yourself. And he is going to catch Z-Freak going for this pull and just spam that miscoil maybe a couple more times to get himself down nice and low. <laughs> He's using on neutrals here. I guess the Ardu gets two creeps. Well played Ooh. by the Nell. Yeah, pulls him back and... Stop those from getting pulled away. Uh, getting an early bit of creep manipulation here, and it will be Omni Knight making the long walk from top to bottom. So similar thing coming from Complexi, where they know if they TP monkeys down bottom, then OG can just match the TP. So whoever TPs first essentially is going to lose that lane trade. As we'll see Seb actually go aggressively with Jerks going with the swashbuckle here, the metamorph wearing off. They're actually going to be able to maybe bring down Miracle. Seb does not have Firefly. 
but still comes close to getting a kill, but may get punished. The Omni Knight showing up soon, gets the Splinter Blast to hit, and with the Arctic Bird set is done for. First Blood goes to Monkeys, who is suddenly in bottom lane. I'm surprised they didn't kill uh, skill Flame Break there. Unless he leveled up like as he was being uh, committing the chase, but there were so many stacks on Terrorblade. I think he dies for sure. Unfortunate. It's okay, though. However, Seb's got to be careful. He can't TP in right away. He will, and now I believe Miracle, he's just like, alright, I'll go top, thank you. And, yep, and that's exactly it, he sees the TP, alright, I'll TP back. I think Seb made a miscue there, he had to do the long walk, because otherwise it just becomes so simple for the TP to counter the lane pressure. And it sucks, like you're already under level, like he was only just barely level 2, doesn't have farm, but you're still in a pango there. Like it's not like the farming experience is being completely lost, like mm -hmm. in an empty lane. Exactly. But, see, now, yeah, Complexity gets, gets the lanes they want. With that said, AM, you know, is free farming, and this is a great AM game. So I don't yeah. think OG are going to feel like getting the wrong lanes is disastrous for their game plan right now. Yeah, I like this, though. Look at mid. He's so low already, and Seb, they should know he's missing. He wants to walk top. Would have loved to get a kill on Lesh, but Limp is aware of something's going on here. And then with the Abaddon miss call spam from behind is playing aggressive on Z-Freak here. Going to blink him forward, but with the Sandstorm in play. I like the orb of venom picked up on Anna because you want to increase your ability to trade hits and be aggressive because all no tail provides as we just saw is that sustain you can spam his spells but you are the one that needs to be aggressive you must try and get as many attacks yeah. as possible and it's just the most value item on AM against two melee yeah exactly. he's laying against two melee it's such a, a big part of that and it Opposite? guarantees you get more mana break hits in as well which makes your lane even easier <laughs> Any catch up limp here? He's going to decrypt in a couple of seconds. He's not going to go for the chase. I think realizing he maybe overcommits if he goes too aggressive there. Thompson very familiar with playing Pugna. He's played this hero a lot. As limp will find himself a haste rune. Denies it from Thompson, and you can see the difference where Thompson rushes his bottle. Limp, of course, going to finish the null, thus does not have that advantage. Thompson was able to win those last couple of waves, but now forced not to go to base, but has to play a bit more defensively. Z-Freak is off map, going top again to pull creeps, it appears. Yep. As now Miracle's doing the long walk bottom because Seb <laughs> instead of just chasing wow. him. Like this is this is what you'd expect. Yeah, he's preemptively left the lane. I thought it was maybe just trying to set up to get some bounty runes or something, but now he's just uh, it's, to, to your point though, Jarex can be the offlaner. He's a Pangolier, you know? Yeah, he's a four, but we've seen Yapsor do this. Like you can become a core just by sitting in the lane, it's not as if monkeys can force him completely out of XP range. Yeah, and yeah, the Batrider's kind of struggling to get anything, but the exchange is TB is struggling. Exactly. So you think of all these heroes that aren't having a good game, and TB having a bad game with this complexity draft, where they've got no real carry outside of TB, yeah. is a big problem. AM 28-14. Yeah, exactly. Yep. TB 12-2. and two. Some trouble. Well, luckily, the bat's still only level 2, but you're making the perfect point, which is that Ana is hard free farming, and Seb is trading his own game to deal with Miracles, and that's that's key. You need Terrorblade to go off to win this game. Zephyr gets some trouble. Is there a sentry somewhere? Did you get dusted? Yeah. Well played. And there's nothing he could do. And Orb of Venom, as you said, no stun. So even if he starts walking away, Anna's going to be able to keep pace. And looking very good for OG. I was telling you this before the series, but I had a notebook with all my strats and stuff for most of my career. And starting in like 2012 playing Han, you know what I put on the title of that notebook? I ban do, you just told me. Yeah, ban Animage. Ban Animage. Ban Animage. And I switched to Dota. We were in for like six yep. months, and I realized, you know what, guys? I've made mistakes. We need to be doing this. And, uh... Ban Animage. It's just, it's just the Kryptonite. No matter who's playing on the roster. Flexi doesn't deal well with Animage. Uh, I'm sure. Thompson going to turn around the bit of mid-pressure. If you got the stun there, I think he dies, but... So, uh, no tell. Gets another knife. Z-Freak comes in with a Sandstorm. Just, oh, he's level two. Gonna try and keep some of these neutrals inside it to get some farm for himself. And no, more than trying to steal, I think. Yep. Oh, I don't know that. But be freaking use. Spire Strike needs to be careful if Abaddon comes back with that dust and Anna to get as many of these last hits as possible and we'll get the last couple of big ones there. His game looking very solid right now. Back at mid, the split earth's gonna stop Thompson from killing off 343, and now the chase is on. Lip with the level six is just burning down Thompson. He's getting lower mana, but he will be able to find the kill, and he's looking looking for a second, but without that split earth landing, we'll not find it. Perfect rune, arcane. Only reason he had the mana to get enough spells off to finish Thompson. And, and there's the other concern. Oh gee, they love doing this, where you stack a 
ton of cleanse mechanics with damage reduction and the hard pick off of a bat rider. So like it's just so hard to kill Thompson when you can you have shields to peel. Um you can and counter initiate with the Pangolier roll through. You can decrep somebody, you can lasso a BKB. Like there's just so many methods of these OG heroes to help out their allies. Whereas Cole, it's, how, how do you actually find those kills right now? Well, the solution to the lane swapping. Uh, yeah. Should be okay here. The dust is on the Abaddon, he's not there, he's in mid. But yeah, Cole's solution to the lane stage has been to jungle the TB. Uh, similarly, Batrider has also been jungling from what I've seen. So, interesting, you know, way to play Dodo. You don't see junglers too often, but this is essentially TB starts jungling at like level two, maybe level three. Mm -hmm. He's now hit level five. He's got double wraith bands. He's maxing the illusion. This is the old, you know, TB's yeah. level one jungle used to be a thing in the old days, and you would max these illusions and get a couple of wraith bands just like this. Back when Iron Talon was yeah. in the game. Usually it's like level four, that two or three wraith bands when Something you can look to go jungle pretty effectively. Um, obviously this game is chased a bit by Bat, but, you know, Seb, this is cool, OG, Thompson just chasing after Z-Freak to l allow Seb to recover some levels in the mid lane. Very nice movement. I'm gonna go to chase him down. Both teams four positions getting a lot of farm this game because of the nature of the lane swaps and Sand King's doing well here, but he needs to find an escape here and it's gonna be Anna getting the last hit. That is not what you want to see. And it's back in the bottom lane, Jerks is hit level 6, so Rolling Thunder comes into play. It looks like he's using it somewhat defensively to try and get away from the complexity rotation. It's Lips Leshrac, can he get the kill on Seb? This one Blast not quite enough damage, Seb gets to the shrine, he's healing up, he needs to get out of this one, back to the low ground, he's going to barely escape. The Firefly ends at the perfect time! He manages to just get away from Monkeys, who did hit him with a level 4 purifying purification that couldn't quite... Uh, uh, concern for Cole's just got to be, you know, when you think OG, you think Anna, oh, hold up. Yeah, that was uh, Seb coming back in with a salve and some misclothes. He's continuing to slow down limp, and now Jarek the swashbuckle oh, should be able to get this kill. The firefly's there. Oh, barely enough to keep him alive for now, but he is still going to go down. Seb getting the kill with the firefly damage, and Seb now looking for more. He wants 3 4 3. He doesn't really have a good escape for this one. Nothing to split the blast off, and he's just getting burned to pieces. The firefly does end, luckily for him, and he's going to look for a deny, but with the miscoil, no chance to do so. Yeah, that that's that that was a, that's a, a very Poor decision to cold embrace the last track there, and yeah, you kept him alive for a bit, but I'm pretty sure Limp can just do the walk away. They weren't going to be able to catch him. Fortunate, and he just had to sit there and accept his demise. Look at the net worth on Limp as well. My goodness, this is not good. This is not good for complexity because I'll be honest, Monkey's Hero is irrelevant in their win condition. It's around about him playing around the Lesh, around the TB, and those heroes are suffering. Seb somehow ahead of both cores in net worth. Yeah, I, I mean, partly is those kills, but Radiant's the fact he didn't have a lane this game and is the higher farm than two of the complexity cores is a big problem. Bounty runes are going to spawn and is going to be complexity grabbing the two top while OG gets bottom. Did look like they were trying to step on this anti mage, which would be such a big kill to get at this stage. AM is absolutely free farming out of control. And it just feels like. Ooh. Mid lane, there's going to be a Sunder. Miracle keeps the alive a little bit longer, but Jerks is able to roll with Thunder, and that Wyvern heal comes in too late against the life drain. It's not out. Can say that. Even it's in time there. There's continuing to pressure. Thompson won't get the last hit. Oh, he gets the silence, though. Oh, the Swashbuckle silence on Thompson. He's actually running forward. He feels confident enough that he can stay alive with the Abaddon behind him. It's true. He gets the tower last and He's willing to die for it. Probably going to say that ah, that's worth it, but Notel may pay for the price himself. Gets hit by the split earth, that heals him up a little bit, but he's stunned, and OG will lose two mid. Get themselves the tier one tower. Thompson really wanted that tower. Yeah, and I think you're fine with this because it's it's OG, right? Who they care about Anna? Anna's free farming, and that's like, money for Anna. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it, it's all good. You know, you realize that look, we've slowed down the enemy cores that can actually make moves and impact the map. Our AM is having the dream start. And like this is this is not just that, but they love playing Dota this way. They're a 114. You know, that's why when Anna came back, the fans went crazy because this is the guy that Radiant feels like they play around absolutely the best. Going back to different rosters and different types of majors. Yeah, I mean OG's been through quite a few roster iterations, and there has not been this four protect one style has only worked with Anna, and then if you go further back with Miracle. Yep. Um, and a lot of the other players they've tried haven't worked the same success yet. Like they were they bad players. Just resolution. I mean, yeah, resolution. Like these guys are all like star players of their own time on different teams, but they just didn't fit the OG model. Yeah. Your lasso into Rolling Thunder. There's going to be a golden brace. What is that? Adam, like Adam. What? 
What, 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 how many times? It doesn't do anything to stop magic damage. Does not. Adam knows that, but, um, you know, he thinks he can perhaps outheal the magic damage, but that is not the case. No, it is not. And, dude, AM, the more than double the Terrorblade's net worth yeah. at 12 minutes into the game. For the top five net worth on the OG side. I mean, Leshrac and Pango are kind of neck and neck, but that is a terrible sign, as we're about to see a 12 minute Battle Fury. 200 gold short of it. That's a pretty good sign. Decent. Sorry, TZ, other, I think, told me about Battle Fury AM game. I don't know who he playing? had. Middle tower is under attack. In that game, who's he playing with? Complexity. EG Complexity were in the same group. Yeah, the, no, the, the yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Or was that the second series they played against OG? No, it was the first game of the tournament against Complexity. They just hit him with the last big AM. Or sorry, same situation here. Call losing the AM. <laughs> yeah, it's becoming a bit iconic. I mean, they have a better last pick. Against EG, they went Kunkka 10th. This game, they went Terrorblade. But unfortunately, when he has a game like this, it doesn't matter what hero he is. A nice ult comes out. Nothing followed up. And the Rolling Thunder is going to look to kind of split this one up a bit. And with the Abbot on the back, him up. Thompson is still full health. But now, the shield ending and the damage is starting to come on through. There's a GA as well to help them out. Thompson's just trying to life his way through this one. Limp getting a little bit low here. No child still trying to save him, but unsuccessful as Limp gets a double kill. Good news, they get the kills. Bad news, this fella's still farming. Yep. It's like, they get top tower off that play? Indeed they did. It's TB. You just, I mean, TB kind of has to farm in the jungle, but you're bottom five in net worth. 3.7k net worth on TB, 7.5 on AM, and yeah, you mentioned double. Yeah, but it's more importantly, I think, AM has that farming item online that starts accelerating him exponentially, whereas yeah. TB is still in that more Look. linear phase of his progression. That that gold breakdown, the AM with like 4,000 gold farm from Crete lane creeps, and the TB just 1,000. That is very telling of, of the state of this game. With that said, AM is starting to catch up in neutrals and ancients, but that's only come since getting the Battle Fury. Yeah. I imagine he was like a quarter of that before the Battle Fury was online. I think the story so far as well is just the Jarek's Pango. Only fourth, like, fourth on his team in net worth, but his game impact has been super high. And you can see, every time Wyvern's gonna ult, tanking stuns in, he'll just roll forwards to counter-initiate and no-tell. Yeah, like, they lose two there, but they're getting towers, and more importantly, they're making space. I love that Spirit Vessel build he's got queued up yep. against all the heals on the complexity side. I think he's going to rush the blink. No, I do agree. I think the Spirit Vessel is just an item concept. It's strong. It's just so good. I think it's underrated. And the cool thing is, if I'm not mistaken, when you Omni W somebody and you increase their status resist, it means the Spirit Vessel ticks will just come faster, right? Yeah, they'll just take the a lot of damage. Of, the same amount of damage in quicker. Yeah, yeah. In like three less seconds. So it's also limiting the regen during the duration. Very nice pickup, and I, I, I keep, someone needed it, and Jarex is really the only one that can get it. Once we have done a good job securing these bounty rooms, consistently getting at least two of them on a part of the map where they converge to a lot of heroes. AM did sneak in behind. It looks like he's going to try and find the Winter Wyvern here, but will be forced to retreat. Skurs coming out on the Batrider, trying to stop Seb's advance, but it's immediately responded with by Jarek. The rolling thunder coming through, catching absolutely everyone. I don't think OG want to actually take this fight. It looks like they're just using it to help get the Batrider out safely. And Jarek knows, you know, he can roll his way out of there and swashbuckle it too. Yeah, and catch a look at the other lanes real quick. See where the quick waves are? You got Anna pushing mid into the tier two, Pugna of Topson pushing bottom into the tier two. Colt constantly on the back foot because they just don't have the wave clear to deal with these cores of OG and they can't catch them without heavily committing as four at least. And that was, I think, five complex of heroes top and in 5v3 they killed nobody. And now that they TP to deal with mid and bottom, OG immediately think, okay, maybe we can find a kill here, but May just be Topson going for a, a solo kill of sorts, but Beefrick understanding his hero's limits will not get caught out or punished by that one. It's well played though. You can see it's just about buying space, buying time, annoying complexity. They don't need to find kills, they just want to ensure that they limit the damage they're able to do around the map, keep the map presence high, yep. and try and just ensure their cores are always able to farm map. I mean, Topson there is a little bit exposed. Like, he, yeah. a Sanking stun into a TP could theoretically kill him. He just knows that if they do that, his, oh, like, the Batrider Penguin will respond by getting a kill top or the AM's free farming. So him dying there wouldn't even be that bad. Yeah, and it's just, it's just the prep from OG. I think they're one of the best teams in Dota with time to create some sort of battle plan. Only the... They were writers for Game of Thrones, but that's a whole other story that I'm not going to get into right now. They... 
the three, four, five, like the bat, you need to address if your complexity. Then the AM, you have to address if your complexity. The last pick, Pugna. It's just each one of these heroes drastically change the game state, and it all starts because of the Abaddon, which covers. Yeah, from, they can't draft on the now. Hold up. It covers the mid lane. They actually bypass yeah. him. They realize they don't want to go on Abaddon, but he's going to be there to shield offset, heal him back up, and No Tails just turn this gank around. He's completely covered them from the blink reveal of the Sand King, and instead it's Z Freak, who just picked up a blink and smoke, who's going down instead. He's meant to be the one finding these kills, and it may not just be him. Luckily, there's a Winter's Curse to stop the Penga roll in. One of the reasons why they picked this Winter Wyvern against the Penga, but ultimately, it just covers the retreat. It doesn't actually amount to anything yeah. at all. Now, do keep in mind, though, it's a 5k gold lead for OG, but it's all on Ana. And he is... He's an anti-mage, though, he's, Kyle. I think, you're, I think that's what you want if you're OG. And, but, you know, you know, Ana might make some mistakes. He's only won a TI and, I think, three majors. Two majors. It's not like he's won two TIs or anything like that. So it's possible... He makes a couple of egregious mistakes there. Oh, double stun from Z-Freak, that'll be two kills. Oh, we've seen Z-Freak sanking now a couple of games. He is very good with these two-man stuns. And Miracle's back in it. If you look at the net worth, like, they're climbing the charts. You, you do have to be careful, because sure, your aim, aim is super ahead, but he needs to transition into helping his team pretty soon. Probably after the next item upcoming, though, uh, with Manta, you are strong. Well, he may look to help now with, with this Metamorph ending. Yeah. Be my, at least what I would like to see. You know, the, you know Meta's down. This TP is no longer, you're not afraid of him as much. Um, and you can burn his mana, stop the Sunder from coming into play. Yeah, maybe something he wants to consider. And yeah, he's immediately comes mid. I think OG know, like, okay, Meta's down. Time to fight. This is a really strong point for us. They've got the Blink and Boots of Travel, the Batrider, so they've got the initiation, and yeah, they are pressing forward with Anna's anti. Yeah, and this is cool. Brother. Anna's not like looking to initiate. He's just farming in the vicinity, and this is how you want to play if you're OG. Just sort of flow with your anti-mage. Let him continue farming as much as possible. Pretend he's not there as well, so yeah. like, maybe Complexity will take a fight thinking AM's not there, and then suddenly, oh hey, anti-mage is actually here to clean up. Yeah. He's on the run. You can see Seb just playing so aggressive. The blink reveal comes out. Very short lasso because the Heavenly Grace and a great yeah. Winter's Curse is going to stop any more pressure coming out. I think Cole know they can't take this fight. They have to just get out with minimal losses. But what are those minimal losses going to be? You've got to imagine it's going to be Z Freak here. He's juking oh. and diving. He oh, gets it. Didn't see it. Oh my <laughs> god. Wow. Some absolutely fantastic moves and talent being shown from the complexity four position player. I know him. He's my friend. He's been a little bit. Time with him, I think, growing up. Only oh, a few decades. Well, hang on, Limp on the pursuit to blank stun in from Z Freak. He's gonna get the no tail alt pop to cleanse, but look at the damage. You can't fight under the nether ward as Limp. Not even using mana moving forwards. It's got to die before he starts casting spells. There he goes. Should be able to find no tail here. He's trying to deny himself and does successfully. Perfectly, and with the rolling thunder bouncing around between this mid lane, Jarex finds the perfect place to do this. He wants Limp with the spirit vessel. He's gonna manage to finish off the kill despite the GA and AM. Has rocked up for this one. Doesn't have a great mana void target immediately. We'll be looking for a blink in again soon, but Plexi have covered their retreat pretty well. They're sticking together, and well, that's a two position Lestrek going down for nothing. Yep. Oh, this is cool. I like this one, man. He's going to go for the Lincoln's build. Against Sand yeah. King, against Sunder, against Wyvern. If you think about it, there's really no way to cancel this unless somebody buys an item to do so. And even then, when you have that extra frame necessary to puncture the Lincolns, it's far easier for Ana to get off the counter spell in time to reflect Thank anything you. that would potentially be able to lock him down. Yeah. The the instant single target disables is something that you can't reliably spell shield off, so Here we go. Yeah, seven K lead. It's crazy how this lead continues to grow. It was four just a moment ago. Um it looks like OG is growing with the down. AM. <laughs> He's yeah. continuing to double the TB's farming. And yeah, that, like you say, that gold lead is just the AM's farm. You, you make him even with the TB, it's an even game, but end of the day, that's your one position. That's Anna, who's doubling, so you're not worried about where that farm distribution is. And oh my gosh, he is so far ahead of the average anti-mage this patch. Probably because I don't think we've seen anti-mage do particularly well in this patch as a hero. Oh, let's yeah, bash her first. I, I'm down with it. it. Lincoln's is cool, but it wouldn't help them find kills. And it's like he doesn't kind of he doesn't need it for survivability at the moment because there's just no way for him to die unless he makes a huge mistake. Except constantly playing fast around the map with the bots, always holding dust. So there's really nothing Zebra can do here to survive. There is uh, some rotation from OG to back this one up. I 
Could be a solo kill. The Sep starts running away before even finishes him off in mid lane and a, a little bit alone, but he is unkillable, one I would say. Well, with Sanking Dead, he's 100% killable because there's just not enough control to burst him down. There's Anna with a haste rune. This is a very useful rune for an anti mage Ooh. to have. It kind of was behind him. Missed the reflection too. Miracle was hoping to catch the anti mage and burn some of his mana with that one, but. I just wanted to bash. Four hits, nothing. And he'll just look to probably continue accelerating. And that, that's again how OG likes to play. They smoke there. They look for the window as Ana moves forwards, but once it's no longer a possibility, you retreat a bit, continue playing around your AM, continue growing your lead. Roshan, probably your next move, but you want to fight first. You at least have to get the cooldowns used from Cole. You don't want to be caught in the pit with Wyvern Ult and TB meta available. They find themselves in that pit, pit as they manage to at least get most of these lanes fairly pushed down. Lexi have smoked up though. They may be doing just that and finding a way to contest OG's Roshan. And it's such a hard thing to deal with right now, but... Complexity, they've got that blink initiation from a Sanking here. Seb's going scouting, knowing that he may need a pop of smoke here. He's going to find the Wyvern, gets vision of him. Popping the smoke, Seb making this a whole lot safer for OG now that they know what's going on. But they also realize it's not entirely safe. They need to get themselves slightly out of the pit. Nice four star fuse, that's a fresh pickup. Perhaps saying Complexity we weren't expecting as he gets himself back to safety here. Jerickson holds lots of trouble, doesn't get the rolling thunder up. The stick charges are there, but the Abaddon not in position to save him. No Tail was actually caught by the Winter's Curse. That's kind of what stopped him from getting there. So Complexity commit a lot. They kill a Pango who immediately buys back knowing that he's a support and his buyback can secure the Rosh. They got the meta though and you can see like OG, they lost a hero sure. He had buyback available but you notice they're not willing to commit as five. When complexity get near, it's about baiting the spells. They got Winner's Curse, they got meta. So you can just chill, make sure you don't get reinitiated on all the no-tail. And he does not have ultimate. He used that in the last fight. No-tail gets the shield off. He's barely still alive. Lip wants to chase him down but will not do so because okay. hang on. Denies himself. But that's now 30 seconds without him. Problem is, this meta's wearing off and Complexity cannot go into that Roshan pit. And with meta down, we may just yeah. see OG. And, and the thing is, like, AM, it's this is a weird game. I don't think Cole is as behind as Anna's lead would make it appear. Just because of the nature of how these fights are going to go. Because there's no one on OG that's comfortable frontlining. They've got great pickoff. They can save one another. Yeah. But there's... AM's not this Medusa type hero that kind of just walks forward and you play around. He's got to play safe because there is a ton of disable on call. And with meta up, Miracle does do a ton of DPS. And well played by Seth. Breaks the smoke. No sneaking Roche for you folks. <laughs> oh? Okay. Oh, he broke the lasso. Same frame. Gets himself out of it. Or is it just the Heavenly Grace? Either way, Guardian Angel comes out as we're going to see Winter Wyvern getting brought fairly low here. And he gets incredibly low himself. Forced to blink out defensively. He was almost out of mana entirely. Wyvern does end up hitting the deck as Jarex wants some more. Aggressive Spirit Vessel being used on that Sand King. He's going to try and hide himself in the sand. So Mana goes blinking back in. Brings down Miracle's Terrorblade like, before he get a chance to use that Sunder with that Bash. And he's not done. Mana goes blinking in with the shield here. He's just got so much sustain. He was so low not long ago, but no tail. With the support play, able just to keep Anna going, keep him fighting. And there's the OG Classic, the friendly tips. They remind Anna that you're doing a great job. Keep on hitting those creeps and now keep helping us hit these heroes. That was a really cool fight. I, Anna, you know, that's why he's uh, one of the best players in the world. They have a ward on the high ground. So he had a vision of Miracle and just blinked in, got the bash, immediate mana void. And once TB dies, there is no hope for Cole. That was a fight without meta. They did a good job kiting around, you know, looking for an opportunity, trying to keep OG out of the Roche pit. But it, it's just like that one opportunity. Hey, Anna's been waiting for it and waiting for it. As you said, even though he got so low, he's not able to finish the kills complexity once you run out of stuns. And he'll always be able to re initiate considering the amount of sustain on his team meta is available but that was that was a big one five for zero and roche Oof. now he's completed that abyssal blade so being able to no longer have to rely on getting a bash when he blinks in so if he can find anybody he's gonna have a lot of instant burst potential with that abyssal manta yeah, checking out the items i think everybody on og is playing quite well definitely looks a bit better than they did yesterday where they drowned Fnatic twice and then got rocked by EG this time. They had a close game one against EG, right? Miracle? Close, close ish. ish. Yeah, yeah. And it had a really rough series, I remember. His yeah. troll game. Troll was, yeah, yeah. was really rough. But this game had a just not being 
contest at all. Getting to highlight what he can do as a farmer. I think, you know, almost taking a page from EG's book, because that, that was the series where Arteza, I think, died once in the two games. He had like a 12 and 0 game, then a 17 and 1 game. 2 and 14 today. For someone that's never won. Ana, however. Look at those <laughs> now. I like what OG is doing. You see, they always want to cut those two waves. You just pull them to the A and you have to, and just ensure that he's able to farm as much as possible. Now you just move towards top. Seb has found limp, and I don't think there's any way for him to escape if Seb is going to continue this pursuit. Like, he knows he's there. Limp knows he's there, and there's nothing to do about it. Yeah, with the AM coming, that's the real big problem here. And it doesn't immediately blink. He's going to go catch him now. Gets the blink done. Yep. Easy. It's so easy. Cut two waves. Sweep to the other side of the map. Yep. Cut the top. Cut these two waves, top and mid. Sweep to the other side of the map and punish complexity as they try desperately to keep waves out of their base. I mean, they're, they're doing the best they can, especially I feel like Zebra's played very well keeping these lanes pushed. I'm often paying for it with his life, but I think he recognizes, you know, he's kind of put his body on the line sometimes to buy his team some time to catch up, particularly the TB, who, you know, is on par with two of the three OG cores, but not the third. Even close. Uh -oh. yep. Not again. Basically, yeah, that's going to burn his mana very quickly. There's normally have to back him up, but the problem is Miracle. I don't think he has any way to get his mana back with it. Just trying. Maybe that's the way. Is Jarek's come swooping on in as well here? Yeah, Miracle doesn't need to go for a Sunday GK. So a decent amount of health here. Is it going to switch targets? Go for the Omni Knight instead. The Guardian Angel. Going to keep Monkey's alive a little bit longer, but no tell's going to go for the body blocks. Anna looking for that bash, not going to find it right away. And Monkey's still kind of juking them. He jukes, jukes another blink, but this time around the flame break will push him back into Anna. No tell will say that's. It's just such a hard game for Cole. You, you just can't find kills. That's the problem. As long as there's a save, really, no tell's a bad move. Unsung hero. There was a moment at the game I was going to come and he just had the perfect items. No boots, dust, smoke, ward, sentry. Magic Wand. And he's just been playing behind his cores the entire game. Cole's all about the stun train, and he's there every time to interrupt and ensure that his core is going to be able to escape unscathed. Maybe something that, you know, took away from the last series, because it was the same thing in that last PO3. All these stuns. Pops in. He's going to get caught out. Playing deep in the enemy jungle alone. Not expecting Lexi to be so aggressive with Omni Knight down, but it pays off, and themselves down a man, but it does look like they are more than interested in fighting. They're going to go in with the Anti-Major Abyssal Blade, take that Z Freak, and they're also going to get a Lasso Catch that's on the TB, and the Omni Knight is not really there to save the day, but it's the Winter Wyvern with the Winter's Curse instead on the AM, going to buy some time for Miracle, but uh, time is all he's got, as he will still end up going down. And Monkeys came in to save him, and I think he's just going to pay for this with his life. The Rolling Thunder is there, and it looks like Complexia just getting picked apart one by one. It's 343 three, who's managed to at least avoid getting caught up by Jarek. Yep, and I believe that's their opportunity to walk into base, get at least a tier 3 here. Hey, they're getting bounty runes and cold. There you go. Oh, I got three. <laughs> I thought they were going to get all four. Radiance but, uh, you know, you're getting high grounded, so it's not really something to celebrate. Lincoln's on the way for Ana. He's going to get even harder to kill. Or really just stop. Let alone kill, but just stop him from killing us. I don't think he's someone you're even trying to kill. You're just trying to ignore him and kill the others. Jarex will finish off. 3 4 3 with the shield crash in. Tier 3 tower should be going down. We'll see if OG want to commit to the high ground here with four of the five complexity heroes back alive. They may just want to back off the shrines. But a couple members made there. Not quite grouped up, but they are also in a position where they can reset things a bit. And you can see Seb continuing to catch the mid wave. OG doing a great job of this. You want to pressure as many lanes as possible. They're going to have all three on the cold side of the map as soon as top looks to catch up. And I expect them to just go kill the shrine, kill top wave, the tower. You can see them draw the circle. That's the area of the map that both sides are going to look to contest here. You've got to keep Dyer out of your Radiant top triple camp. And uh, as Cole, I'm just not certain how you do that. You look at the net worth of Ana. He's still twice the net worth of anyone else in this game. And Seb, what a, what a rise from... A roaming no lane three position to suddenly top two net worth and he's really had a fantastic game all things considered. He's been a part of so many kills, constantly hunting the cult heroes trying to split push, tons of space for his friendly anti mage. I mean, this well is, done in general. I mean this is to me like when I consider Seb in his place, so this is him at his best when he's on these heroes that can control the tempo. I think he for me more than like Topson is the tempo controller. Well, he is he is the primary shot caller. And it's a lot easier to do that 
when you're one of two things as an offlaner. The primary initiator or the hero with the big cooldown team fight spells. As he also loves to play the mag, the tide, etc. Yep. Some initiation there. <laughs> Anis is not a hero you can go in at this stage of the game. They're going to try their darndest to do so. Instead, it's going to get turned around. They want this Omni Knight. He's being kept alive a little bit by the Cold Embrace, but he's still going to go down. And Miracle needs to be careful. He gets deleted with the Rolling Thunder popping on top of him. And he can buy it back, but he won't have Venable for this one. Anis is going blinking on the high ground, knowing that he's got all this backup from Dotel's Abaddon. He's getting the stun shielded off of him. And a couple of buybacks later, it does look like OG are going to be forced back, Jerex. And he's got that washbuckle to help him escape and then Jerex who was on the enemy high ground doesn't go down. So, another just well played fight by OG. They're just getting further and further ahead, progressively building their advantage to an insurmountable lead. At some point you'll kill somebody without buyback and you'll have all your spells off cooldown. You'll be ready to rock yeah. and roll. Love this pickup even from Seb. He recognizes something I wish more teams did, which is you should always, always, always have a blast. So he picks it up. There's nothing else he really needs. Yeah, it's like, who else is going to buy on your team? You know, theoretically, Pingo might be able to, but I think he's prioritizing more those utility initiation items. Actually, going to Lotus, Lotus Orb. Yeah, more cleanse. Prioritize, so... <laughs> God, talk about something that just deals with complexity slams so well. These, yeah, single target disables that can be reflected and cleansed off is a big problem. And it's just OG really reading the games. You know, they were obviously watching Cole play the last series. They recognized, look, they're probably going to Lesh Sanking. And I feel like they almost baited them into it in a sense, where they recognize that the stun trains, the constant combinations, Cole able to play with pace around the map was a big part of why they were able to be Fnatic. And OG, like, they just, you can't fight into this lineup. you have never been able to. Ana's going to find a kill on Wyvern. Lasso on Monkeys. He has no buyback. He's dead again. That, that's more or less the game at this point. They cannot defend in a 5v3 against an anti-mage who is essentially two or three heroes in himself. They're going to go on TB. He's dead with that buyback and complexity. He'll be chased back to their fountain and probably chased into typing those two magical letters. There they are. GG is cold and complexity get dismantled in game one. Yeah, I, I think you must ban Pangolier. When you look at OG and you consider that they can play it on, I believe, three different players. Uh, no tail probably could if he had the opportunity to do so, which is doubtful because it's just a better 2-3-4. You, you can't give it away because you're going into the draft not knowing